Hey everyone, this is Brendan Lowe from Jazz Piano School. I got my nifty new steady cam here. I know some people were like, oh Brendan, I'm getting sick from your uh, your handheld videos, but hopefully, like if I move this around right now, it kind of uh, it kind of stays. So that's awesome. This is a great purchase. I can make these uh, make these home videos. It's a lot easier than setting up my whole rig, my camera, my tripod. But anyway, we are on episode number 136. We have our very special staff member, Sterling Koza, uh, coming to you from Eastman School of Music. He's gonna be giving you these amazing, easy, simple tips you can start to apply to play in the meter of 7-4. I know these odd meter time signatures can scare a lot of us. They are tricky to get the hang of at first, but once you go through this lesson that Sterling's gonna give to you, it's gonna be so much easier. So, with that being said, don't forget to go to jazzpianoschool.com forward slash podcast 136 to get the practice materials for this episode. And with that being said, I just said that, <laughs> enjoy this lesson. Hey everyone, this is Sterling Koza here for jazzpianoschool.com. Thanks for joining us for today's podcast. Today I'm going to be showing you some techniques that I've found useful for playing in 7-4 meter. Now when some people talk about playing in 7-4, they say, oh, it's just two measures of four with one beat cut off at the end. Or it's like you're playing in four but with a limp. And that doesn't go so well if you're trying to really smooth out your playing and make it feel really natural, which is ultimately the goal. So there are a couple different ways to think about it. Uh, the most immediate way is separating the measure into beats of four and three. So in a bar of seven, that would sound like this. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Or alternatively, you could reverse those and do three plus four. That would sound like one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. Now those can be helpful when you're trying to get inside the meter, but ultimately you don't want to be counting while you're playing, but rather feeling the rhythm to play most naturally. And I refer to Latin music, which uses claves. And clave, meaning key, can be the key to really feeling the rhythm instead of counting it out. So in 7-4, we can use claves that split the bar up into smaller beats so that we can feel it instead of counting it. The first one's called a 3-3 three, three clave because it's three rhythms in succession separating the measure into half, so seven small beats and seven small beats. And it sounds like this. One, two, one, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, 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 one, two, three. So what that does is it splits the measure up into small beats of two, two, and three instead of one big block of seven. So I like to put that on the keyboard and work on that so that when you go to play with people, it feels more natural. Today we're going to work on the tune Lady Bird. Uh, this is a standard that tends to work well in 7. So we'll just play with the chords for now with that clave. So you heard I was, how I was using those 3-3 three, three claves through the chords. Now in slower time, that would sound like this. 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3.
Now you can also move things around by changing the placement of your clave in seven. So instead of having three beats and three beats, you can have one beat, then three, then two. So instead of one, two, three, one, two, three, it can be one, one, two, three, one, two, one, one, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. So now I'll put that on the keyboard. Alternatively, there's a 2-3-1 clave, which sounds like this. First it's 2, then 3, then 1. 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1. And you might notice with these claves that they start to add up back to 3-3, three, three, but the placement goes through the bar at a different point. So here, listen to another example on the keyboard. I'll play a 2-3-1 clave in 7. So I'm not really thinking about the numbers here. I'm really just feeling the rhythm patterns and it's it feels really natural once you get used to it. Now the next step would be implementing that into your improvising using the claves. Now there's a way to get this rhythm pattern on a metronome. I use an app called Pro Metronome and if you set the subdivision to 14 beats per measure, you can do groupings of 2, 2, and 3 to split up the measure. So it'll sound like this. So that can be useful to practice too if you're working on playing in 7 and don't have a metronome that accents the seven beats. So one way to start improvising with this pattern is just by simply playing the big beats with the clave, nothing fancy, but we'll still be in seven. So check it out. I'll be playing the changes of Ladybird. I'll play a 3625 to get us into it. So that was a really simple version. Um, you can start practicing that at a slower tempo and work up to this tempo. And once you're comfortable with that, you can start adding some more connective tissue to make it sound a little more melodic.
So now we're getting into that seven meter and it's starting to sound a little more natural. And another thing to experiment with to get a little more sophisticated is using different claves over that 3-3 three, three clave, a type of rhythmic layering. So the metronome will be playing a 3-3 three, three clave in seven, and I'll be playing either a 1-3-2 or a 2-3-1 clave, and listen for the rub. Here's a 3-6-2-5 again to get into it. So as you can see, there was a lot of rhythmic dissonance going on there, but it really made things interesting and broke us out of that traditional seven pattern to create a little more interest. Let's see. So another exercise to really get this clave thing internalized is to tap the big beat in your foot. So we've been clapping small beats in our hand, but if you, if you tap one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, those will be half notes in our foot. So if you're following along at home, tap those half notes in your foot and then let's try the 3-3 three, three clave. One, two, three, four. One. So notice how in the middle of the measure it kind of flipped over. So if you really get used to internalizing this larger beat, it really frees you up to play phrases over the bar line and phrase more freely in seven. One of the prime examples of this is Brad Meldow playing uh, on his first album, Introducing Brad Meldow, he plays It Might As Well Be Spring, and they do it in seven with that clave. And Jorge Rossi and Brad really get free with it over the bar line, and they're not confined to that measure of 7-4. They really get loose because they're able to feel the big beat. So to practice that, you can go ahead and put your metronome onto those half notes at a slower tempo. I'm putting mine at about 88 beats per minute. Let's see. Cool, so listen for the juxtaposition of that bigger beat with the smaller beat. And I'll play another one of those 3-3 three, three claves with the chords. Check it out. So I was really locked in with the metronome there, and you could hear how it was flipping every other group of seven. 
So it's interesting how that odd meter adds up to being even every other bar. So to bring it all together, I'm going to play this tune for you guys in 7-4, Lady Bird. And I'm going to use some of the clave action we've been talking about, and I'm going to try to start phrasing over the bar line with this bigger beat in the metronome. So just experimenting with a few things there. Hope you enjoyed and got something out of that. And hope you get some help with some of those claves and find some stuff to play around with. So happy practicing. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed that lesson from Sterling. That was so, so awesome. I love all the material he presents for us. So don't forget to hit the subscribe down below to get all of our content, our podcasts, our Lick of the Week sent to you directly in our YouTube channel. And obviously go to jazzpianoschool.com forward slash podcast 136 to get the practice materials for practicing in 7-4. If you have any questions or comments, as always, feel free to leave them down below. And please, please, please share the videos with your friends um, and whoever you uh, may think uh, will like them, okay? Uh, with that being said, have a fantastic day. Until next time, happy practicing.